So you have a dilemma. You're looking for a new house in San Francisco. As it turns out, so is everybody else. Obviously you want the best one out of all the ones lined up. But if you deliberate for more than a few hours, it's guaranteed someone else will snatch it up. You have to decide on the spot whether you want to buy it. And if you pass it up, it's gone forever. So what's the best strategy? If you buy too soon, you risk not seeing the best one later on. And if you buy too late, you risk the best one passing you by. Surely there's an in-between sweet spot, right? Well, yes, there is. 37%. You look at the first 37% of houses and then buy the next one that's better than anything you've seen so far. This is sometimes called the look then leap rule. Look at the first 37%, then leap at the first best thing. 37% seems like a pretty random number, but it's not. Imagine you have just two houses lined up to view. You have a 50-50 chance of getting the best one, no matter what you do. If you buy the first one, the second one might have been better, but it also might have smelled like old cheese. But if you pass it up, you have no choice but to settle for the second one. You might as well buy at random. But things get a bit more interesting when we add a third house. If you buy at random here, you have a 1 in 3 chance of getting the best house. But can you do better than random? When you see the first house, you have no information. When you see the third house, you're out of options and you have to buy. But when you see the second house, you have a bit of both. You know whether it's better or worse than the first, and you have the choice to buy it or pass it up. So what if you just buy it if it's better than the first house and pass it up if it's not? It turns out this is the best strategy. You'll get the best house exactly half the time, which is better than the 1 in 3 chance you'd have if you'd just chosen randomly. If we add a fourth house, you have the best chances if you leap as soon as the second house. And if we add a fifth, you leap as soon as the third. As the number of houses grows, the line between looking and leaping settles to 1 over E, which is just about 37%. As it turns out, you'll get the best house 37% of the time. This may not seem like much, but keep in mind that it's scalable, meaning that the odds won't change if you're looking at 10 or 1000. This is a problem in optimal stopping, a field of computer science which studies when to stop. This logic can be applied to when to stop looking for a parking spot or when to stop spinning the roulette wheel, even when to stop robbing banks to increase your chances of getting away with it. It adds a whole new dimension to the phrase, quit while you're ahead. But what about something a bit less logical, like love? Let's ask Michael Trick, a professor at Carnegie Mellon University who thought he'd apply the 37% rule to his love life. He was a young undergraduate student at the time and didn't know how many people he'd end up dating. But luckily, the 37% rule has its flexibilities. It can also be applied to time. Michael assumed he'd be dating from ages 18 to 40. Not quite sure what he was planning on doing when he turned 40. So that meant if he looked the first 37% of the time, he'd start to leap when he was 21.6 years old. Coincidentally, that was the exact age he happened to be at the time. Being a true believer in math magic, he proposed to the very next girl who he thought was better than all the rest. And she said no. See, your house dilemma didn't take into account the possibility of rejection. But luckily, mathematicians have worked this out too. Let's say you have a 50-50 chance of getting rejected. Hopefully your odds are better than this, but just go with it to keep the math simple. Using the same kind of analysis as we did for the 37% rule, it turns out you should start proposing after just a quarter of your search. If you get turned down, just keep proposing until someone says yes. With this strategy, your chances of finding the best partner are 25%. This might sound bleak to you romantics out there, but keep in mind, this is the best possible partner. Something else your house dilemma doesn't take into account is the possibility of going back to something once you've passed it up. Like Johannes Kepler, 
You know, the guy who discovered the motion of the planets. After his first wife died, he dated 11 women before deciding he liked the fifth one best. He went back to her, proposed, and they married. This is yet another variation of the optimal stopping problem and can have success rates as high as 61%. I'm an extremely indecisive person and I think it's human nature to think that making the best decision means constantly going through all the options in your mind and weighing them all carefully against each other. But when you're in the race against time and your options are limited, few aspects of decision making are as important as knowing when to stop. Thanks for watching guys, so this episode was based on this book, Algorithms to Live By, The Computer Science of Human Decision Making by Brian Christian and Tom Griffiths. So if you liked today's video, make sure to hit that like button. If this video gets to 100 likes, I'll do a video on the next chapter which sounds super interesting. It's about how to decide when to stick to what you know and when to try new things. So in my case, whether I should order a Hawaiian pizza for the hundredth time or whether I should try something new like the exotic Mediterranean lamb. So yeah, if that sounds good to you, like this video, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! I think I'll just get Hawaiian.